I do have a fairly uh, complete representation of the 10 series models. Uh, I, I think if you get down to it, there's 14 different model numbers assigned to the 1010 alone and a lot of variations of the 1010 model. And I would never claim that I have every one of those represented, but I've got a good representation of all of the 10 series from the 110 all the way up to the, the Pro Mac 8200, which was the, the very last in that line. Um, and I have one of the few collections that I know of, of every one of the 82cc models. So from the Super Pro 80, 81, 81E, Pro Mac 850, the Pro Mac 805 was actually the next one chronologically, and then the Pro Mac 800, uh, and some of those were equipped with a compression release, a pop-up compression release, and some had the Q port. So I've got one of each of those. Um, the Pro Mac 850 Super, which I believe was a McCulloch marketing tool again, that the Pro Mac 800, because of the better muffler, didn't have the outward appearance of the performance of the Pro Mac 850. So I think when they uh, labeled the, the Pro Mac 850 Super, people thought, oh boy, I'm going to get a saw like that 850 again, right? And, and they were probably disappointed because it didn't make as much noise as the 850. And some of the 10 series McCulloughs are kind of pretty well known for making noise. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that Dan arm last night. That's kind of an interesting piece there. It's uh, it's like a, a copy of a 1010. Yeah, well, or uh, according to Acres site, virtually identical to the McCulloch 110. Okay? And I can tell you from a personal experience, having torn that saw apart, cleaned up, put it back together again, the only part that probably actually interchange besides the clutch and the drum and the bar, is the cover for the oil tank. That's the, that's the only parts that are so the, actually... So the ignitions are different? Ignition is, is completely different. The uh, cylinder is different? Like yes. Where the, where the bolts go and everything? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, completely unique. I wonder if Dan Arm had kind of used what they had available to them in their market too. I, I'm sure. sure, I'm sure, because the, the Dan Arm was Daniels and Armstrong somewhere... Uh, in, in Greater Britain, and uh, they were building other saws. And this is the only one that they built that, that looks like this. Uh, the other saws, some of the earlier ones were very utilitarian sure. in appearance, and other models, you know, with vertical cylinders. So uh, it was obvious that they copied the basic McCulloch layout, whether or not there was a license arrangement or some agreement or Maybe some disgruntled uh, McCulloch engineer decided to take a vacation in England. I don't know. I think that this wall kind of fully represents uh, this recurring theme that we're talking about as far as McCulloch continually uh, marketing and the way that they the, the way that they marketed sure. over the years. Um, they they kind of took the same product, uh, you know, with the with the ten series. Produced it over what four decades? Three or four decades? Yeah, three anyway. Yeah. And you know, improved it over the years and renamed it a hundred times. And it's th this is a testament to yes. all those changes over the years. Yeah. And their marketing and, and and good marketing. You know, if if last year's model was a one ten, this year's model is a two ten, and it has one new feature. And I think the difference, the big difference between the one ten and the two ten, was the addition of the impulse-operated automatic oil. Well, a guy whose thumb got sore pushing the oil button one day said, yeah, I, I want that, so I'm gonna buy a, a 210. And next year, they come out and say, oh, now we have the 310. You know, uh, like J.C. Whitney, it's, it's, it's bigger, it's better, it's faster, it gets better fuel mileage. Right. And so you, you take it in, you get yourself a new 310. And then there were some that, that really were uh, kind of significant leaps. So the 310 was still the, the original 54cc displacement. The 410 
was, as far as I know, the first of their 70 cc okay. models. So wasn't okay. the 410, the 610, and the 710? 410, 510, 610, okay. 710, and then Promax 700, CP70, the cushion power CP70, uh, the Super Pro 70, they're all the same basic engine. And uh, like McCulloch did from time to time, the difference between the, the 54 and the 70 cc, whatever they did on the 70s was special. So you got more than just 16 more cc's, you got a little something extra. Mm -hmm. In, in what they did with the porting and and uh, you know, just the, the way that those worked, uh, the 82 cc saws were again, you know, they're they're more than 12 cc's better than the 70s. Sure, there's something special that they did in combination with the porting on those. Um, in fact, there's later McCulloch service bulletins on the 82 cc's that recommend running a 32 to one mix because they were kind of on the edge in, right on. in the factory design. And so to, to make sure that, that it ran well enough, long enough, they recommended going 32 to 1. 32 to one. So the average was a 40 to 1, or the recommended was a 41 prior to Correct. 40 to 1 prior. Yes, with McCulloch oil. Right. Okay. If you didn't use McCulloch oil, <laughs> then you were supposed to use uh, 16 to 1. I see. <laughs> I see. And uh, oil is a then, whole different conversation yeah, yeah. that we're not yeah. going to get into. Oh, we don't want to create an oil thread? <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's move down here a little okay. bit. I see you've got the, the leader charger here and a couple of other specialty, some, some unique products, yeah. Uh, one of the things McCulloch did, again, you know, we've got a Super Pro 80 with the cold weather kit. So in certain regions where cold weather is a bit of a problem, they would add this duct and a special air filter cover, and to complete the package, you're supposed to have a special air filter element in there that would uh, simply draw some air across the muffler to help pre-warm it before you went in. So you know, the cold weather setup, some gear drive saws, the Lear Charger. The backstory there is that Lear Aviation Corporation, who actually put that package together and sold it, had 24 volt electrical systems on their planes their jets, and some of the small uh, fixed base operations where the planes would land wouldn't have a 24 volt charging system available. So they bought the uh, 1010 power head, and it is a 1010, it's not a, not a 70 or a Pro Max 70 like some people envision, but the 1010 power head and equip it with the alternator, and this one actually has the 12 and 24 volt switch so that you can go between 12 or 24. A throttle lock? Yes. To lock that? Yeah, well, some of them just had a pin. You'd pull it open and insert a pin, and that would, that would lock the throttle uh, at, at the running speed. I don't remember, was that say quiet tone or something like that? Super on the muffler, quiet, but, yeah. But the mufflers were, were exceptional on those. And you know, if it's gonna be running for 30, 40 minutes at a time or more uh, for a really dead battery, it, you wouldn't want to listen to that. And you'd yeah. need to have an exceptional muffler for one of those saws yeah. if you want to keep it quiet. <laughs> yeah. This one came to me from a young fellow in California. He goes by Wood Slasher. And it actually has the original airplane receptacle or plug on it. And I haven't quite figured out <laughs> what the 110 volt outlet on there was supposed to do because it's it's not 110 volts it's connected up to the same 12 volt yeah circuit maybe to go to an inverter a 12 volt I, I, well but yeah, yeah, who knows. I, yeah who knows the other curious one there was the amp whistle and that was uh, the power unit for a bomb hoist and yeah you can see it's got the, the, the special rf aircraft style uh, connector for the spark plug and if I can poke behind you here, that's, that's what the bomb hoist looked like. And so the, the power head that you can see and a cable mechanism. And what I understand is these would have been used, for example, on board an aircraft carrier or the other big, big ship 
to, to raise the bonds from one level to another. Uh, hmm. I had an offer from uh, Bob Cornwell's, McBob's daughter, to, to import this whole package. She's got one available, uh, but it just wasn't practical in terms of the, the size of the package and shipping costs. Uh, so at least at this moment, all I've got is a new old stock Promax 700 modified power head with the extended run fuel tank. It's got a connector like a boat motor so that you could refuel it on the fly or okay. run off a bigger tank. Uh, you know, just another one of the things that, that McCulloch got into or people got McCulloch into to try and expand their, their market. Certainly a curiosity. I've never, yeah. like I've heard of the Lear chargers. I've never heard of one of these before. Yeah. This one, again, uh, eBay seller had it available. It wasn't moving. He contacted me and said, would you, would you be interested? Can we make some arrangements? And he's close enough uh, in Wisconsin that I could, rather than shipping it, make the trip over, pick up a few extra goodies along the way, and you know, make it come out pretty well for the both of us. Good.